Hello YouTube, this is Lloyd De Jong. Today we're going to have a look at the book The Religious and Moral Doctrine of Jihad. Note that it says in the title that Jihad is a religious doctrine, it is also a moral doctrine, and of course if it is in the Sharia it is then a legal doctrine. Let's have a look at what this book and this scholar has to say and what those implications are for us. The book is about the Sharia. The full title of this book is Governance According to Allah's Law which is the Sharia, in reforming the ruler and his flock. So this applies to the Muslims. We're going to see what this great scholar of Islam has to say about jihad and how it is applied in practice. So what is a Sheikh al-Islam? It says in the Ottoman Empire, it's the chief judge of any of various large Muslim cities, especially the Grand Mufti of Constantinople. Let's have a look at the Wikipedia definition. Sheikh al-Islam is an Arabic term. It was used in the classical era as an honorific title for outstanding scholars of the Islamic sciences. It was an informal title given to jurists whose fatwas were particularly influential. The jurist that we'll be discussing today, Ibn Taymiyyah, is one of only 24 Islamic scholars that earned this title. Now let's talk about Muhammad Amin. Muhammad Amin was in the YouTube comments harassing Sonia Azam harassing Thaddeus at Reason Dancers and so on. This is what he wrote to me. Jesus means earthly pig. He was very, very busy in the comments denigrating the Bible, Christianity, Christians, and so on. And then shortly afterwards, he tells us, I'm not Muslim, except that I must believe in Jesus as a mighty prophet sent by Allah. So he's a Muslim who believes in Jesus as a mighty prophet, but Jesus is an earthly pig. This is unfortunately rather common. This is very, very common. Go through the YouTube comments, go through Facebook comments, you will see this. It might well be because they have a different conception of Jesus and that we worship the biblical conception of Jesus, whereas they have Isa or Esau, the Quranic Jesus, which is a heretical Jesus taken from Gnostic texts that were considered heretical even 2000 years ago. I had a conversation with this man and that led to the creation of this video. So by the way, Amin in Arabic is a name that means faithful and trustworthy, right? It has a female equivalent, which is Amina, 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 and so on. And of course, Muhammad was called Amin or the trustworthy in his youth. And I asked him a number of questions about the Sharia. Now do notice, Muslims will flat out refuse to quote you the Sharia. This is really interesting. They will not ever discuss the Sharia, except in the most absolutely vague terms, in the most deflective terms possible. Ask them to show you the Sharia definition of jihad. Ask them to show you the Sharia punishment for apostasy. They absolutely will not. And I say to them simply, you are ashamed of the Sharia. Muslims are ashamed of the Sharia. If it's something so amazing, if it's something so wonderful, if it is the great law of Allah, then shouldn't you be proud of it and trying to show it to people to impress them? Shouldn't you be wanting to show people, look how wonderful this is, read this for yourself so that you too can be as impressed by it as I am and convert to Islam? Well, no. For some reason, they want to hide it and make sure that no one sees it. Very unusual, very interesting. Think about that. So anyway, I asked Amin to quote me on Ibn Taymiyyah's Sharia rulings on the punishment for Muslims and non-Muslims who mock or insult Islam. Obviously, this is the death penalty for both Muslims and non-Muslims alike, which tells you, of course, that Sharia applies even to non-Muslims. Even if you're not a Muslim, Sharia applies to you. And I asked him for the formal Sharia rulings on Jihad, and he posted this quote instead. This is an Ibn Taymiyyah quote, and it says in Kitab al nubuwat As for the oppressor who does not fight, then there are no texts in which God commands him to be fought. Rather, the unbelievers are only fought in the condition that they wage war, as is practiced by the majority of scholars and as is evident in the book and Sunnah. I only found two other references to this on the internet. One was a very obscure Reddit post and the other was the Yakin Institute. And we'll have a look at them in a minute. Ask for the book that this is in. Ask for a copy so you can read the rest of it. See the context. See if there was more before or more after. Good luck to you. I simply could not find this. If you can, please let me know. Because certainly Ibn Taymiyyah had plenty to say. And also, this Kitab al-Nabuwa 
have a look at what the title says and what book it is. Ibn Tamiya has plenty to say about jihad and fighting the quote-unquote oppressor. Let us look and see what the Akin Institute has to say. So they're quoting Ibn Tamiya about jihad being a response to military aggression and not merely religious difference. Unfortunately, the Sharia, if we read the Sharia, it would simply just show you that this man is lying. This Justin Parrott character. As the oppressor who does not fight, well, we've read that, and also says fight them until there's no more persecution. If they give up the fight, there is no more cause for war. Well, unfortunately, they miss the part where it is incumbent upon Muslims, obligatory, in fact, for them to fight. And thus, if the people that they've managed to subdue give up fighting, then of course they are then to accept that. And if they don't stop fighting, well, they must kill them. But of course, it doesn't tell you that Muslims initiate the fight. So all that said, let us go have a look at the religious and moral doctrine of jihad by Ibn Taymiyyah.